Gamers. Snake. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. For years, Konami's Metal Gear Solid counted among the few gaming franchises that withstood the test of time across several console generations. Its 1998 debut introduced players to the wonders of stealth action gameplay, and subsequent entries elevated the genre further, laying the groundwork for the advent of Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell and the like. Unfortunately, turmoil within the company meant the Konami-published saga didn't have the opportunity to conclude as strong as it started. And its last entry, the universally panned Metal Gear Survive, managed to leave somewhat of a blemish on Metal Gear's otherwise immaculate legacy. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, the last mainline installment, launched in 2015 with a less than satisfactory ending, effectively leaving a bad taste in the mouths of countless MGS faithful. As a spin-off adventure that took the series in a completely different direction, Metal Gear Survive hardly had a chance to succeed on even the basis level. The survival action title wasn't what fans wanted, especially given the absence of series creator Hideo Kojima. Still, the experience offered a fair share of intrigue and fun. Yet, by virtue of the alternate universe and zombie-centric premise, Survive struggled to retain the winning charms of its namesake. If anything, Survive's drastic departure from its progenitors proved that slapping the title of a beloved brand on a new idea wasn't enough to revive said brand. In this particular case, such a move may have led to the stealth property's premature demise. This is the tragedy of Metal Gear Survive. Konami publicly underwent several key changes throughout 2015, the most significant of which first occurred in March. The Japanese corporation implemented a new organizational structure on March 16th, reframing the business around a centralized production division system that emphasized a clear distinction between management and creative roles. Prior to this shift, creators handled managerial responsibilities in addition to their regular game development duties. Hideki Hayakawa, the president Konami installed on April 1st, later told Japanese publication Nikkei TrendyNet the older business model proved beneficial when studios specialized in distinctive products. He argued, however, that sudden changes in the market rendered those specializations invalid. Thus, Konami often faced difficulties with taking advantage of market shifts. The fresh approach allowed managerial staff to direct their expertise towards building strategy, which they would then execute with creative personnel. Days after the restructuring took place, inside sources alleged Hideo Kojima and Konami were at odds over a power struggle, culminating in senior staff at Kojima Productions losing access to certain corporate communication privileges. The then-supposed falling out also meant Kojima and other studio leads would play a limited role in the Phantom Pain's promotional tour and depart Konami at the end of 2015. Konami responded to the claims with a statement that relayed two pieces of noteworthy information. First. Kojima would see the Phantom Pain through to completion. Second, plans were already in place to establish a new production crew for an unannounced Metal Gear entry post Kojima's exit. The move to reassure fans of the publisher's commitment to Metal Gear Solid made sense given concurrent reports about the Phantom Pain. However, no one, perhaps not even Kojima himself, could have imagined where Konami would take the stealth action franchise next. Kojima and Konami parted ways in late 2015. In December, the Metal Gear Solid creator established another Kojima production studio and announced his partnership with PlayStation for what would eventually become known as Death Stranding. Konami began recruiting for a new Metal Gear not too long thereafter, then unveiled the secretive project as Metal Gear Survive during Gamescom in August of 2016. A four-player co-op survival title, Survive promised a Metal Gear experience like no other. And though it took place directly after the events of the Phantom Pain's Ground Zeroes prequel, Konami representatives repeatedly clarified that Survive in no way served as a continuation of the original saga. It instead constituted a spin-off, with a fresh take on the brand's stealth elements. Speaking with Dengeki Online, producer Yuji Korikato explained the development team derived Survive's core concept from the side-ops content in Ground Zeroes. 
Prequel missions labeled in-game as pseudo-historical recreations. Survive's premise, meanwhile, revolved around the idea that Ground Zero's mother base catastrophe opened a wormhole that sucked in the new game's protagonist, a player-created soldier who idolized Big Boss. Thus, an alternate universe was born, separate from the main timeline and riddled with non-human creatures for players to combat while trying to escape the desolate parallel world. Cory Kato elaborated further in an interview with Games Radar, revealing that Survive started as a project to adapt the Phantom Pain's gameplay. The team's efforts centered on providing players with new ways to experience the action and gameplay systems from the Phantom Pain by mixing in survival elements and co-op. And according to Cory Kato, so-called hardcore gamers responded positively to a focus-tested prototype, feedback that apparently surprised developers. Reassurances and marketing speak did little to mitigate the concerns of those critical of Metal Gear's new direction post-Kojima's influence. In fact, fan backlash immediately erupted following the title's Gamescom 2016 announcement as most expressed dismay at the combat-oriented reveal trailer. Upon addressing the widespread disappointment, Konami developers asked that fans keep an open mind, but first impressions were already set in stone. Hideo Kojima's comments on the project's unveiling amplified skepticism amongst Metal Gear faithful, too. During a TGS 2016 panel for Death Stranding, Kojima made it clear he had no part in Survive's creation, adding that Metal Gear games were about political fiction and espionage. He went on to ponder how zombies fit within the lore, though he'd previously pitched the idea of Cyborg Ninja fighting nanomachine-powered zombies in a hopeful sequel to Platinum Games' Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. The franchise's famed character and mechanical artist, Yoji Shinkawa, similarly distanced himself from Survive. It became clear then that though Konami's next Metal Gear endeavor utilized the proprietary Fox engine that powered both MGS5 installments and repurposed their assets, Survive lacked the creative vision that had long imbued the IP with a unique flair. News of Metal Gear Survive's $40 budget price raised more questions about the title's quality, as did Konami's shift from its usual marketing strategy. Was it a quick cash grab that upper management had little faith in long term? Or might something else have been brewing behind the scenes? Presumably, the publisher's switch to a headquarters control system affected production on Survive in some capacity. Konami's 2015 transition to a revised production structure gave way to the Metal Gear Survive group adopting the internal moniker of Production Department 8, a designation befitting that of an assembly line. Publicly, Konami referred to the crew as Konami Digital Entertainment, further emphasizing the headquarters controlled operation. As Polygon noted in a piece delving into Survive's credits, the publisher's desire to uphold the newly implemented system specifically became noticeable throughout the game's marketing campaign. The press release for Survive's announcement, for example, featured quotes from Konami representatives, as opposed to developers, despite Metal Gear veterans comprising a significant portion of the production team. This wasn't a one-time practice, either. Staffers remained in the background throughout much of Survive's relatively lengthy promotional period. In an unusual move compared to Metal Gear entries of the past, developer names were absent in trailer credits. Plus, Yuji Korokato acted as the sole staffer to speak publicly about the survival title in the handful of interviews Konami arranged. Needless to say, it seemed a far cry from the Kojima days. Ben Judd, former executive at talent agency DDM, posited Kojima's rare status as an industry celebrity, likely motivated Konami's decision to downplay staff roles during Survive's marketing. Judd argued that a person of Kojima's stature no longer suited Konami's business model, which evolved to include multiple laterals such as sports clubs, mobile games, and pachinko machines. The Metal Gear creator's rise in power over the years may have challenged Konami financially, too, since someone of his caliber could reasonably request a higher salary and demand a larger budget for PR. Mobile games and gambling devices, all incredibly profitable, required no such extra funding. Thus, in an effort to avoid unwittingly elevating another Kojima-esque persona, the publisher elected to instead undermine its staff's influence on Survive's promotional endeavors. Whether or not such a choice backfired internally remains a mystery, but evidence suggests at least some employees were displeased with many facets of the production, namely Kojima's exit and the subsequent promotion of new creative leadership. Not long after Konami released Survive in February 2018, fans and critics stumbled across a hidden message to the series creator delivered through an in-game text document. 
Wordplay in the document blatantly spelled out KJP Forever, the KJP being Kojima Productions. Additional bits of text on the same page implied someone within Production Department 8 had taken umbrage with two specific Metal Gear Survive leads, director Yota Sasumizaki and producer Yuji Koikato. Interestingly, the game's credit showed the director and producer weren't the only employees to receive promotions between projects. In comparing Survive's credits to those of The Phantom Pain, Polygon noticed considerable turnover for the vast majority of leadership roles. Personnel assigned to lower-level positions on the previous Kojima-led venture replaced senior staff for Survive. Yet, because of Konami's restructuring, none of the new creative leads were ever handed the level of control previously bestowed upon their predecessors. Perhaps that factored in to Survive's myriad shortcomings. Initially slated for 2017, Konami postponed Metal Gear Survive to February 2018, citing a need for extra polish as the reason for its delay. In spite of the protracted development cycle, the title's reception ranged from negative to middling. Combining the grind of survival games with stealth mechanics and tactical espionage action worked well conceptually. However, a glut of poorly implemented design choices culminated in discordance between great ideas. Players notably took issue with Survive's steep learning curve, which made the opening hours a punishing slog. For instance, the player character's hunger and thirst levels depleted far too quickly due to what many critics described as an unbalanced resource management system. These early game woes felt compounded by the time investment required before crafting items such as guns became an option. Monotonous missions, generally stale storytelling, and the always online requirement, despite the availability of solo play, were all deal breakers too. As such, plenty of players likely missed out on the fun cooperative gameplay and other noteworthy online components. Fans who abandoned Survive because of the difficult first act never encountered the few compelling narrative twists and revelations, most of which occurred near the tail end of the experience. Perhaps that's the true tragedy of Metal Gear Survive. Yes, fundamental issues riddled the experience. Yes, it seemed as though Konami's corporate restructuring failed the game's creative leads. And yes, Survive missed the mark in myriad ways, even when viewed through the lens of a survival experience minus the burden of the Metal Gear legacy hanging on like an albatross. But no one gave it, nor Production Department 8, an honest chance, Konami included. As a result, the critically panned project failed commercially, merely moving an estimated 52,000 units in Japan throughout 2018. While hope for a Survive sequel died long ago, Along with any possibility to improve upon the franchise's underdeveloped survival mechanics, reports of Konami's interest in outsourcing its properties to external studios indicate Metal Gear may someday get its overdue revival. Thank you for watching. We'd like to take this time to thank, by name, the generous patrons who have pledged to our Hall of Fame reward tier. Alex Moretti, Caleb Shishkifich, Fernando Lopez Ojeda, Maktoum Saeed Al Maktoum, and those currently subscribed to our producer reward tier. Dari Rap Sikurtson, EmuMovies.com, Lame Game Man, Milkshake, Schizo Lingvo. If you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to our channel and backing us on Patreon.